Hi. So you clicked onto this video trying to find out what is up with this thing called GIF fetish. Well, you're in luck because in this video I would love to introduce you into a world of an ever-growing community of gearheads. My name is Phoenix, let's not waste any time and get right into the video. So, what is this gear fetish exactly? To explain this, let us first get the gear part out of the way to quickly look at what a fetish is. Fetish, a form of sexual desire in which gratification is linked to an abnormal degree to a particular object, item of clothing, part of the body, etc. There are all types of fetishes people experience, some more commonplace than others. Sexy lingerie, high heels, eyes, booba, at times even just the color. As the name implies, gear fetishism is a fetish around gear and that gear could be anything you like. What makes gear fetishism particularly strong as many is that it involves all five of the human senses. Vision. The look of the gear is probably the first thing that people start to develop an interest for. You see pictures of people in gear, maybe in a movie, maybe even a video game. Touch. The feeling of gear can be quite intense depending on the type of gear. A full MX gear kit can feel heavy and restrictive. Feeling the different textures on your skin and also touching it can spark up intense sensations. Smell. Different types of gear have a distinct smell to them. A rubber suit with its very distinct latex smell. A leather biker suit with a strong leather odor mixed with smells of who wore it. Taste. While not the most intense for me personally, Many I have seen mention a strong asphyxiation with a taste which I have seen mostly coming from the rubber guys. Hearing. Gear tends to make very distinct noises. The creaking of a leather suit. The sound of breathing through a gas mask. Just hearing some of these noises can lead to some intense sensations. For many in the community there is also an increased focus put onto covering the entire body in gear putting your casual self away and turning into the gear you wear. This can have quite a liberating effect, with many reporting a sense of increase in self-confidence. Once the gear is put on, the problems of the regular life start to fade away, enabling a form of safe escapism. When it comes to gear fetish, there's really no limit as to what you can be into. But one thing many of us agree on, the more of your body that it is covered in gear, the better. So let's go over some common types of gear combinations and gears kind of styles that you see online. Leathers, specifically bike gear. One piece leather suits, helmets with dark or mirrored visors, big racing boots and thick leather gloves creates a stunning gear biker look. Motocross. Another type of bike gear. Motocross changes leather suits for colorful outfits worn with protective gear, motocross helmets and motocross boots. Rubber. Rubber has a long history in the world of fetish, but nowadays is absolutely inseparable from the gear fetish scene. Rubber catsuits, gloves, masks and especially gas masks which also work great in combination with any other gear type. Neoprene and diving. Diving gear encompasses another type of rubber, be it in form of wetsuits or dry suits. Wetsuits are a tight yet lighter version, while dry suits sit looser but are heavy in weight. Diving masks and a scuba set complete the look. Military and tactical Military and tactical gear is gear as it would be worn by soldiers or SWAT officers. Fatigues, Plate carriers, tactical helmets and tactical boots will ooze dominance out of anyone wearing it. Cosplay Cosplay, while not as prominent, is also represented in the Gearverse. Movies, TV shows, anime and video games are full of beautifully geared up characters ripe to gear up as. There are so much more types and there really is no limit. It's something where you can really let your creativity just explode into all places. So these are just some examples, but what I really personally like to do is just kind of combine different types of gear and then see what sticks, so to say. Just put on something and then see if it works well in a visual combination. So in the end, it is really about you, what you like, what you are into, what you like looking at, what you like feeling on your body. Just get creative.
For many gearheads, one of the first big places to connect with other gearheads all around the world used to be the website GearFetish.com. GearFetish.com was a social website created by Motocross back in the middle of the 90s and relaunched in 2002 under new ownership. It had personal profiles, forums, an image vault full of web pics and an ever-growing gallery of photos uploaded by the site's users. At its last stages, it amassed around 55,000 users and had well over 750,000 photos uploaded. Sadly, in 2015 the site was taken offline and since never returned. Editing Phoenix shining in real quick. As I was editing this video and trying to look up the GiveFetish.com website again, I saw that a new poll has appeared on the website, asking a few questions to most likely see if an interest of the site's return is wanted by the community. If you want to fill out the survey, just head over to GiveFetish.com, the link is in the description. After the loss of GiveFetish.com, gearheads are scattered all around the internet. So mostly you can be sure to find lots on the more common social media websites like Twitter and Instagram and dating platforms like Recon and Romeo. You might get a little intimidated by some of the social media profiles out there. Lots of followers, very imposing and intimidating pictures. But fret not, many of the gearheads are very very open people who are happy to answer your questions or just talk to you or help you on your journey when you just kind of start to enter into the gearhead space. Just write someone a message and just see what happens. For more in-person activities, there are multiple events focused on gear fetishism happening around the world. Most well known being the Gear Blast events, which happen once a year in the US, the UK and in Germany. Other events that aren't particularly focused on gear fetishism, but do have gear fetishes running around are Gearpoint Switzerland, Darklands and Folsom Berlin. So, I hope you liked this little introduction into the world of gear fetishism. I hope you learned something, I hope you found some pointers as to where to go next. And I'd just like to thank you if you made it this far. This was my first real video of like doing like a real project and something. Very free form. I mean, I wrote a script and holy hell, I got so many lines wrong. It is insane. <laughs> but. Yeah, if you like what you have seen, uh, be sure to follow me on my Twitter, it's where I mostly do stuff, upload my pictures and more. Um, subscribe to this channel if you want, so I don't know how much more content I will do in the future. It really depends on how, like, if people like this video and like what they are seeing here. If you are already in the gear scene and found some things that I didn't talk about or didn't mention, be sure to leave them down in the comments. I would make sure to... Uh, pin them, upvote them, so they are seen by people that scroll down there. Also, down in the description you will find all the links to my socials, all the socials for everyone who participated in making this video. Uh, yeah, just check everyone out, I guess. <laughs> and with that, I guess I say thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and maybe if I make another one, see you next time. Bye! Peace.